Hello and welcome to Kingsview Church. Hi, my name is Quentin Ray. I'm the family pastor here at Kingsview. Just want to say thank you so much for being a part of Kingsview Church Online and being a part of our mission, connecting people to Jesus Christ. We want to continue to ask that you stay connected through summer. Um, and you know, I know you're going to be on vacation wherever you're watching this, whether you're in an RV traveling the country or you're just at home or you're at the lake or whatever. Please stay connected with Kingsview. And um, we would love to, to be a part of your summer, and we want you to be a part of what Kingsview is doing this summer. You can do that by downloading our app and making sure you're staying on top of what, what we got going on. The other thing is we are going to be sending out a lot of emails with information about what's going on at the church and what we're doing this summer. So if you are not getting um, Kingsview emails, we would love to put you on that list. And so maybe just message us or send us your email or ask about um, getting on the list for our email system. Um, we'd love for you to stay connected that way. We have a lot of stuff going on this summer, especially for family ministry. So if you're from kindergarten, if your kids are from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade, we're going to have a lot going on um, and we want you to be a part of it. And so... Um, please stay connected with what, we're going, what we got going on. And the best way to do that is probably email um, and also you know, seeing the announcements um, on Kingsby Church Online. Uh, summer is a time where we really dive into Scripture, and we are so excited for that uh, this summer. Um, just the sermon series we got coming up, we are going to be diving deep in the Word, so um, I, we would love for you to be a part of that and, and stay connected in doing that. Service is about to start and so, um, just quickly, we want to say thank you again for joining us, and we hope that you enjoy service. But it couldn't fill me An empty praise Treasures to fail I never know when you came along and put me back together. Now every desire is now satisfied here in your love.
give belief for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the turn bones into armies and that's an amazing thing that story comes straight from scripture and as we live our lives as we look if we were to look back at the beginning of our lives from our earliest memory until now we would see evidence that the Lord has worked all through our lives even during the hard times even when it seems like he wasn't there but if we were to look we would see that he was there preparing us for something, for the next thing, for that unique call that he has placed on each one of our lives. So as we sing this next song, think about that. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. Storm made way for spring in every season from where I'm standing. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life.
Jesus, Jesus. 
the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is alive that the shadows can't deny Father, we are so grateful for who you are. We are grateful that the evidence of your goodness today is all over our lives. We're grateful that we can just call on your name in any situation, that all we have to do is speak your name and your word says that darkness will flee, demons tremble just at the sound of your name, God. You are all powerful, you are powerful to change the past. You are powerful to change our future, to lead our, us into our future, God. And I pray today that as we hear your word spoken, Lord, that you will speak to us, God. That you'll speak to Ryan as he brings the message that you've given him. And that you'll just let us hear a word from you today. We love you and we praise you for who you are. And we thank you. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, I'm going to go through some, some quick announcements, and then I'm going to jump right into uh, to our sermon. Uh, we're going to be in Philippians chapter 3, uh, verses 12 through 6 this morning. Uh, and so we start out, if, if you're a guest with us, man, it's so great to, to have you. And I know as people are getting back into a rhythm of life, uh, I just want to say thanks for being here. If you're watching uh, on, online, we want to say thank you as well. And just remind everybody, if you fill out a connection card, uh, drop it in the back. We have a gift for you. And it's just little things that we want to pray for you, pray with you, and really celebrate where you're at uh, in your life. And so if you could do that, we'd love uh, to have you a part of that. Uh, we also want to uh, announce, I got a lot of announcements here, and I think this thing is not, man, I tell you what. Technology is wonderful until it doesn't work. Oh, yeah, we're celebrating gra graduates today. Yay! So uh, it's going to be in the second service. So please, if you want to stay around for that, that's great. Uh, it's such a great milestone for that. I uh, also want to take a minute and just remind everybody, next week, Coffee and Conversation. It's at 930 and 1045. Uh, really excited about the topic. It's going to be just passing on a legacy, a Christian legacy of faith. Uh, and so Tony Brazier is going to be facilitating that conversation. So again, it's going to be over in the Family Life Center, and I think that's going to be a, a, great, a great time. Uh, also, we have discipleship celebrations next week. And so, uh, again, we talk about we don't graduate from a discipleship. We actually celebrate a discipleship lifestyle and, and what that looks like. Uh, it's like it, it's, it's those things that just go pop in life, right? And so I uh, want to make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, I got to stand in the exact right spot, I think. Okay, just take over. Just, just hit the next slide. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, everybody, let's give it up for Jennifer Brazier up in the sound booth that has to work with me. So. Okay, so teen camp, kids camp, you see the dates on there. Uh, man, this is uh, a big thing because last year, 
uh, didn't get to have camp, and, and you, know, you, you, you kind of miss those milestones. But this is also an opportunity that if you would like to send someone to camp and scholarship, scholarship someone to camp, you can do that as well. Uh, you'll notice on our giving, uh, when you go to our giving, that's an option. And also for parents that are actually going to be uh, sending kids to camp, you can pay through our app or you can actually uh, just donate. I know a lot of our families have graduated kids out of not only kids ministry, but teen ministry. So this is a wonderful opportunity to still be investing in this next generation. Um, next. All right, we, we already know that. Next. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days today, I can tell. Oh yeah, KidCon. Hey, KidCon is going to be a fun, exciting day. I would encourage you, there's some postcards in the back. Grab one of those and, and hand it to your neighbor. Uh, have your children or your children's friends pass it around. And again, this is a one-day VBS uh, pretty much on steroids. And so we are so excited for that. You see first through sixth grade. Uh, if you are interested in helping and vol volunteering, please see uh, Quentin uh, or Katie or myself, and we'll, we'll put you uh, in, in the right area. Okay, what's next? Man, are we ever going to preach? I mean, is this, I mean, what's next? <laughs> All right, Philippians, here we go, yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole review. Um, really, honestly, uh, where I'm at in, in my heart this morning is we're celebrating the seniors, but I also think for many of us today as believers, Philippians 3 verses 12 through 16 really speaks to us in a way that maybe, maybe we haven't thought about. And I know in my own life, as I begin to read through this passage over the last few weeks, it truly challenged me to look at what it means uh, to forget my past, to be looking ahead, and to grow deeper. And that's what Paul is talking about. He's, he's talking about a few things of, I haven't attained, uh, I still stretch, I still reach. And I know a lot of times when uh, we read this passage, and really Philippians chapter 3 as a whole, Last week would be like, it's a, it's a counting questions of cost and price. This week is like athletic questions and, and training and different things. But I just see it in a different, a different idea and a different concept this morning. For me, what I see, and I put it in the, uh, in the notes on the app, is that I wonder if we have stopped learning about who Jesus is and who God wants us to be for his kingdom. When's the last time you actually went to a library? When's the actually, when, when is the last time you actually were studying and wanted to learn something, but you just didn't know what to do or where to go, so instead of Googling it, you went to a bookstore and actually began to learn? I think personally, as a believer, we have stopped learning about who God is and who Jesus is and who the Holy Spirit is, and how he is challenging us to grow deeper and wider with him. And that's why we sometimes lose or misplace our joy. Again, I, I, I look at this picture, and I know we're talking about graduates, and we've had a lot of graduates from uh, universities, but also high school, and I begin to truly think about what has kept us from stopping to learn and to look and to look ahead at how God is moving on our lives? When's the last time in your own personal life that whether you put a prayer request up on the prayer board back there or if you're watching on Facebook, you sent us a message about, hey, this is, this is what's going on in my life. Can you pray for me? When's the last time that you truly stretched out on faith and said, you know, I, I sense God doing something in my life and, and I want to grow? You see, I think so many of us in our culture today when it comes to Christianity, we say yes to Jesus, we check the box, we say yes to baptism and it's a great celebration, and then we stop. We don't continue to grow the way Paul talks about here in this passage. We don't continue to grow the way the Spirit is moving upon us. We become fearful instead of truly understanding that the name of Jesus fights back darkness and doubt. Just at the very name, demons run and flee. See, we don't take ourselves to that place because we don't really fully understand what it looks like. You know, I think these quotes are really good. 
In fact, uh, this is what Winston Churchill said. He said, I am always ready to learn, although I do not always like being taught. It's a pretty appropriate quote. This is from Peter Drucker. You know, some say the, uh, the father of, of management pretty much and, and created. Peter Drucker says this, we now accept the fact that learning is a lifelong process of keeping abreast of change. And we would all understand that, that we're constantly changing. But then he goes on to say, and the most pressing task is to teach people how to learn. When I think about Christianity, I think about that very much. The most pressing thing is to teach Christians how to continually grow and learn. And this is what Paul's going to talk about here in a minute, that he has not attained. Uh, for those of you that know me, know that I love the blues, and I love what B.B. King says. Uh, he says this, the beautiful, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. Like once you've learned something, no one can take it away. So the question is, what have you given up about what you've learned about Jesus? What have you given up about what you've learned about God? Albert Einstein says this, uh, go to the next image for me. Wisdom is not a product of schooling, but a lifelong attempt to acquire it. A lifelong attempt to acquire it. When I think about the Christian life, it's exactly what I think about. This is a lifelong process of learning. None of us get to a place, we should not get to a place where we say, ah, I've arrived. You want to arrive? When we take our last breath. But somehow in our minds, we've reversed it to think that we're going to be perfect here and know everything here. And we forget about the reality. Even what Paul says is that I'm forgetting the things that are behind me and I'm stretching. I'm reaching to the future to receive the beautiful benefit of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, what I think challenges me about everything on this passage this morning is this, is that somehow it's acceptable to learn about everything else except a personal relationship with God. We've, we've made it acceptable to learn about everything else in the culture. History, politics, accounting, science, uh, social media, technology. As you can see, I'm still learning it. We've made it acceptable to learn about everything except your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we begin to push back and say, you know, I'm, I'm not a pastor, or you know, I just, you know, I've been in church my whole life, so I just go through the motions. We've not made it acceptable to say, where is God teaching you? Where are you growing? What are the things that God has for you right now? What do you see God in your visions and your dreams and how he's saying, this is the life I'm offering you? We get scared to death of that, just like a senior who's about to graduate and doesn't know what they're going to do, but then we just rest and we just sit there and act as if that's where Christ wants us. Oh, Christ says, follow me. He didn't say, hey, come unto me and then just sit there for the rest of your life. He said, follow me. And he reminds us that there are some difficult things. But I can't help but wonder if more times than not, we allow our minds and we allow our heart to take and hijack the reality of where God is trying to take us. Let's jump in. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 says this. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but notice this what he says. He says, but I press on. That I, lay, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. You know, it's so interesting that I think so many of us, we do not press on because we think that we have to perfect the place that we're at. You see, the reality is that we are asking and we are being told by Paul saying that he's pressing on in spite of being perfect. Can you say that? Can you say that, man, I don't, I don't fully understand everything, but I'm going to continue to press on. I'm going to continue to step out on faith. 
You see, that's what it means to watch the Lord and watch the Spirit of God and watch God the Father begin to mold us and shape us to say, look, you are stuck and you've got to press on. You've got to keep moving forward. Jesus pursues, and I think this is an important concept. When we press on, it's because Jesus is pursuing a personal friendship with you. And if we are truly honest, this scares us. I, I want you to think about the very first time maybe you met your spouse or, you, you know, someone, a friend. I want you to think about what that's like. You maybe meet them for the first time and you're like, oh, they're, they're okay. They're cool, right? And so you kind of find common ground. Uh, where are you from? What school do you go to? What hobbies do you have? Uh, you know, you, 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 you begin to try to build that foundation of friendship. And then maybe after a few weeks, you're like, hey, let's, let's grab coffee. Let's, let's meet. Maybe you get in a fantasy football league with them. Maybe you go play golf with them. Uh, maybe you go drink tea or something. I don't know your style of friendship. Usually me, it, it's going to end up with a taco and a cup of coffee or something. And then after that, you're like, well, hey, let's get our families together. You go to lunch after church, or you maybe go to a baseball game, or you do some type of event together, and the friendship begins to become bonder, and it, it, you grow deeper. And then after that, you might be like, hey, let's, let's go on vacation together. And, and you go to vacation together, and you get to see your children grow up together. You get to see all these memories begin to take place. And then there's typically a moment inside of that that you grow so deep with that friendship because of something that happens. A death, a loss of a job, parenting, the you know, same parenting life stream, your kids, something, there's just something that happens. Again, we make it acceptable to be friends with everybody in the world. But Jesus, Jesus introduced himself to you at some point and said, hey, I want to get to know you. I want to spend time with you. And you, you, you dabbled a little bit. And you maybe had a prayer journal. And maybe you spent time in his word to understand who he is. And then you went a little deeper to understand that everywhere you go, he goes. Everything that he knows about you, you begin to unpack and reveal. And that friendship begins to grow deeper, even though what Paul says, even though I have not attained the perfection of Jesus, I press on and I'm moving forward so that how Jesus has laid hold of me, he says, I want to be a friend with you. I am now striving to be a friend with Jesus. Can you say that this morning? Do you have a friendship with Jesus? And I love this passage because Paul says, I'm not perfect, but yet I still press on. We pick this up in this thought process of not being perfected in the next few verses. Starting in verse 13, we read this. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, and he uses this word again, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know, it's interesting when you really break down this passage and what he's saying as he's pressing forward, he's almost, it's almost like an attack, he's moving in such a way, but I believe more than anything, and I, I really thought through this this past week as I was unpacking this in my own life and how I maybe had miss, uh, had a misconcept on this passage in my own personal life. And I begin to really tear back some layers and begin to realize what Paul is talking about is our memories. Our memories. And I don't know if you've ever done much study on memory. I know that recently I have personally, that basically it's broken down into a short-term memory and a long-term memory. Now the cool thing about a short-term memory, which all of the spouses in here can understand if you have a husband, is the short-term memory is 20 to 30 seconds. 20 to 30 seconds, and either my mind and your mind either says, oh, <laughs> I need to remember that. It automatically puts it in long-term memory. If it doesn't put it in long-term memory, you've got 20 to 30 seconds to recall it, and other than that, it's like, what squirrel? Where'd it go? And then you hear things like this, I told you we were going. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. And then your long-term memory remembers how to pretend. Oh yeah, that's right. 
And so your long-term memory is broken down into two major categories, your explicit and implicit. And you can see that the explicit on that side actually says it's the episodic and the somatic. So the episodic are things that happen. So an episodic memory might be you remember your own graduation. You recall what that's like. Or you remember a Christmas. Or you remember a smell. And it brings back an episode. Such as the smell of rain. The smell of cut grass. And it brings up certain memories. Now, the other side of the episode is the semantic, which is just the basic knowledge and concepts that when you smell uh, ground beef, you know that tacos are about to happen, right? You just know it. Everyone's going to be so hungry after this because I'm stuck on my food. See, my long-term memory is just bringing all that up. That's the, it's, it, the explicit side. The, expli- the implicit side is a little different in the sense that it is your procedural and emotional. And so your procedural are things like riding a bike. And you have heard that said, once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget how to ride a bike. Kind of like water skiing or snow skiing, the procedures or driving a car. The emotional side is some different things that they use inside of psychology and counseling and bringing back up the emotional side, such as priming and probing and good thoughts and, and, and really coaching through that long-term memory, uh, post-traumatic stress and, and some things like that. Now you say, Giles, why are we going through this? Because when I read this, what I read is Paul breaking down the mind through the influence of the Holy Spirit. And this is what I believe Paul is trying to teach us based on science and based on the reality. That we should have a short-term memory regarding our past an explicit and episodic memory pursuing Christ. Now let me, let me break that down. We should have a 20 to 30 second thought process of on our of our past regarding when we were not believers and we should have an explicit that it's detailed it's episodes it's how God has moved on us it is the memorial stones that is the long-term memory that as I realize I have not attained and I press on into that deeper and wider relationship with Christ I'm looking ahead and I'm learning how he's teaching me to be a believer but do you know what we we do we tend to reverse it we tend to have an explicit and episodic long-term memory regarding our past and we have a short-term memory pursuing Christ. We forget about the reality of what that looks like. We forget that what Paul says in Galatians as he begins to really work through that. Can you go to the next slide? As you work through that in Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, Paul says, hey, this is who I used to be. And he begins to unpack exactly that he was a persecutor of the church. That he did not believe in Jesus. I mean, you want to talk, and even last week he talked about who he was and, you know, from the tribe uh, uh, of Benjamin and the Hebrew of Hebrews and all that. And he's, he's not being braggadocious. He's saying, if anyone has anything to brag about, I could brag, but I count all that loss. He says, I have forgotten about all that that you think is important. And it's the same in our Christian lives. We tend to focus and highlight our past instead of focus and highlight what Christ is doing right now in our present and where he's taking us in the future. I want to read that passage again. It says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. The short-term memory, I'm letting them go that are behind and I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead because I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Jesus Christ. It's a powerful reminder that maybe some of us are joyless because we have forgot to rejoice that our past is forgiven. Our past is our past. 
and that there is a present that Jesus is growing in us and growing with us and showing us where we're going that we never thought from our past we would ever get there. Man, it's exciting to me to know, to know that I am a believer and that Jesus Christ has saved me and I've accepted that salvation and that my past is now forgotten. So why do I try to remember it? <laughs> why do I try to drag it along like a pet? Hey, come here. Come on. Come on. That's what he says here next. In verses uh, 15 and 16. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And I'm going to stop right there because it's just semicolon, right? He's saying... Now, I want you to know that I'm not perfect, but I'm stretching and I haven't attained and I'm trying to grow in my friendship with Christ. I'm trying to lay hold of Christ as Christ has laid hold of me. I'm forgetting the things that are behind and I'm looking to the things of the head. And he says, therefore, that's why as the many are mature, have this mind. He's saying, if you're a mature believer, you should be diving in and thinking like this. That we should be growing in our relationship with Jesus not regretting all the things that we're carrying with us. And he continues in verse 15. And if anything you think otherwise, I love this, man. I love this. God, God will reveal even this to you. Hey, can, I, can I just stop there and say this? That what Paul is saying, he's saying, if you think you're different and you think that you can bring your past with you and you think that it matters, hey, just, just if, as you get mature, just notice this. God is going to reveal to you the things that you need to hear. The question is in my life, in our life, is are we really learning how to hear God's voice? Are we really looking to understand what that looks like? Have we come to the place that when we realize what God's revealed to us, we're like, oh, thank you so much, God, for answering that moment, answering that prayer, revealing to me the present, so I don't have to keep on this track. I don't have to keep on this mental uh, exercise and this mental roller coaster that I'm on. And we pick this back up and he says, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. This is what he's talking about as he, as he brings all this together. If you're going to grow in your relationship with Jesus and you're going to understand that we are learning and looking ahead at how God is moving on us, you have to be self-aware as you mature in your friendship with God. You have to be self-aware. Like, I, I think so many times as believers, we lose sight of the reality that we all have blind spots. Which is why Paul says, God's going to reveal that to you. And the same rule affects everybody. It's for all Christians. The same maturity, the same process is for all Christians. The question is, are you growing and learning or are you still at, as Paul has said in other passages, still in that infant state, complaining that you're in the infant state, but you're not growing to grow onto the meat. You're still in milk and you're not on the meat because you're still sucking your thumb, pouting about the things of the past and the things that you can't control even though God has revealed it to you. And so you're not growing in a deeper and wider relationship. And so you're constantly like this hamster on a hamster wheel. And you feel like, man, what's the point? Self-awareness in Christianity has got to be one of the most important things in your heart and in your mind. Because you have to understand that when you're self-aware, you say, man, I got work to do. I have not already attained. I'm gonna press on. I know that I sinned here. I know that I failed here. I know that I made a mistake here. God has revealed that to me through the conscience of the Holy Spirit. He's convicted me. I understand that I have to press on. I understand that I have to keep going because that is what Jesus did as he laid hold of me and he began to 
teach me who he is. And he began to teach me what he did on the cross and to teach me all the sufferings that he did and to teach me that he rose from the dead and that as he teaches me that he's coming back again, that I have the same mind as other believers that we're all progressing, moving forward, understanding that no one is perfect but Jesus. So here's the question for each of us this morning. What are you looking towards? Are you looking towards the high prize? Are you looking towards that deeper and wider relationship with Jesus? Or are you looking over your shoulder trying to figure out how you're going to make amends with that? See, no one can change your past. But what we can do is give all of our past and all of our failures to the Lord who forgives us. It's what we read in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Is it not? If we are able, right? If we are able to confess our sins, Jesus is faithful to forgive us of our sins. Have you asked Jesus into your heart this morning? I love graduation. I love milestones that you can use as illustrations in life. Some of us have never really graduated onto that next level of playing field in our hearts and our minds and our relationship with Jesus. We've just kind of sat there. Some of us have never graduated into life because we've never accepted Jesus as our Savior. And so you're just going and constantly trying to fit all the pieces together. Some of us have asked Jesus into our life and into our heart, but we've not truly become a friend with him. We don't call him. We don't spend intimate time with him. We simply treat him like a Google search and do a quick thing to try to learn something instead of going through the process to understand that I have not yet attained I press on to the upward call that is of Christ Jesus. Would you pray with me? Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much for today. I thank you for just who you are, and I, I, I personally thank you for this passage and how it reminds me to have a mind that is not only focused on who you are right now, but where you're teaching me and where you're growing me as a believer, as a child of God. Lord, I pray if anyone has never accepted that, they've never answered the, the yes question if, if you're a believer, they've never answered the question in their hearts of, if I took my last breath, where would I go? Lord, I pray that your spirit reveals the reality to them, that they don't act as an infant anymore, but they begin to understand that we are called to grow and grow in our friendship with you. Lord, I thank you again for teaching me what it means to be a believer that understands that I'm not perfect. And I still have life to live and things to do. But Lord, I pray in my own life and I pray for our church that the things that we're involved in and the things that we're trying to accomplish bring you glory. Because it is all about you. Everything that we do should be about glorifying you and reshaping our lives to align with your will as it is in heaven, as it is on earth. And Lord, I thank you for this time, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? We always have a time to respond, and it's the same every week. And I would encourage you, number one, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, whether you're in the room or you're watching on Facebook, I would encourage you, to, to truly make that a decision today. That you acknowledge Jesus is the Son of God. You acknowledge that He died for the sins of the world. And you acknowledge that He went to the grave. And you confess and understand that He did that for you. And He rose again. And that He is in heaven. The right hand of the throne. And He will come again. If you've done that. I would encourage you to let us know so we can pray with you and give you resources on how to grow and how to have the mind that is of Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is of Christ Jesus. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. If you have done that, are you learning and looking at what God wants for you today? What He wants for you tomorrow? 
what he wants for you in five years from now. And I would pray and I would encourage you to let us know how we can pray to help you, help you find, man, just your rhythm that you can say, I haven't attained and I press on and I can't wait to see what God's going to do in my life. So you can worship, you can pray where you're at, you can fill out a connection card, drop it in the back. You can come forward and pray. But as always, each and every week, we say this. Respond. Respond to what God has on your life. It me to be. I am not what I've done. I am loved unconditionally. Loved by the measure of love that I bring I am not who I know I am known by the King of all kings Jesus, you are enough Jesus without it. Day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come to you and, and truly just think deep. Lord, I know sometimes we don't like to go there because we cannot help but think of our past. And I know that when we go and we think deep, 
not only do we think about our past, we become a little fearful of our future. So Lord, I pray that we take the, the posture of learning when it comes to our friendship with you, that as we dive deeper into where you take us, we begin to realize the true definition and understanding of mercy and grace and forgiveness. And we begin to realize where we're going in your presence and by your leading and by your prompting of the Holy Spirit. So I pray you bless those that prayed where they were at and that we continue to keep our heads held high, focused on living for you, understanding we have not we are not perfected, we have not attained, and we continue to press on in our friendship and our maturity of being a believer in Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you and be seated. Thank you again so much for being a part of our service online. We want to take a second and just have a time for response. And um, what we want you to do is just take a second and think about what was the big takeaway or your main thought that's going to carry with you for the rest of this week. And maybe it's something that the Holy Spirit challenged you with when you were listening or something that just jumped right out and caught your attention. Take time and really think about that and let that resonate in your mind and really nail that down um, because you know, we, we want to be moving and connecting people to Jesus Christ and walking with the Lord and really moving in our Christian walk. And so one way to do that is take a second and respond to what the Holy Spirit has put on your heart. And you can leave us a message. You can um, leave a comment. You, know, you can contact us if you want to t talk to us about that. Um, or if you've made a decision or you have questions about what it means to follow Christ, man, we would love to talk to you about that. So please reach out to us if, if you have any questions about that. As you go throughout this week, and we know that you live very generously with the way that you live, we're going to ask that you have a chance to live generously and be generous right now through your tithing and through your giving. Um, you can do that through texting to give. You can use our app or you can go to our website and give that way. You can set up a reoccurring gift or you can set up a one-time gift, um, whatever is best for you. Um, but God wants us to live generously and we're asking you to do that. The last thing we want to talk about is we just want to pray for you. Um, we've started a prayer wall at Kingsview in the Dome and just writing down prayers and having people pray over those things. So when you send us a prayer, and we pray over those things. So if you have something you want us to pray about, we would love to be a part of your walk with Christ and a part of your life just through prayer. Um, and it's a very powerful thing we get to be a part of. We would love to pray for you. If you have any questions about Kingsview Church, please feel free to contact us or get to know us. Um, we would love to get to know you and your family and be a part of your walk with Christ.